A man who helped inspire the film The Wolf of Wall Street now caught at the center of some real-life drama. Today, the FBI raided a Florida medical device company. The company's executive vice president inspired actor Jonah Hill's character in The Wolf of Wall Street. Excuse me. Yeah. Is that your car on the left? Yeah. One of the guys who helped inspire The Wolf of Wall Street could be in some serious legal trouble. You show me a pay stub for $72,000, I'm going to quit my job right now and I work for you. Hey, listen, I, I quit. Danny Perouche, top executive there. He inspired the character played by actor Jonah Hill in that movie. The real question is this, was all this legal? Florida's Division of Insurance Fraud confirms it is helping the feds with the case. An attorney for the company says it is cooperating. In fact, this is by Steve Harrigan, live in Miami. Steve, what is going on with that? Greta, this was a big-time raid in Boca Raton, Florida. It began just after 10 a.m. at the offices of MedCare. There were agents from the FBI, from the IRS, even from the Department of Homeland Security, along with local police. They surrounded the building and were carrying out documents, boxes full all day. Of course, the large publicity is due to Danny Perouche, portrayed by Jonah Hill in the film The Wolf of Wall Street, by a bunch of brokers who pumped and dumped penny stocks. The charges are that the same thing is going on now, only this time it's with senior citizens who need diabetes or breathing supplies. It's a medical supplies company that targets the seniors, according to one former employee, sells them stuff that they don't need and then bills Medicare. The charges are being denied by the company, but so far uh, we haven't heard any word from officials yet. They, are, they say they are cooperating with the investigation. They've been investigated before, just two years ago, the company received $30 million in reimbursements for Medicare. And as for Mr. Perouche, despite having spent three years in jail for securities fraud, he is living the high life in southern Florida in an oceanfront condo and driving his and hers Rolls Royces with his second wife, despite still owing defrauded investors more than $200 million. Greta. Wow, Steve, thank you. What a story.